Okay, we're back. Time to move on to Flame Mammoth. Now, in this game, the order in which you tackle each stage can have an effect on a different stage's environment. For example, normally you'd come here and there will be lava everywhere. But, since I defeated Chill Penguin first, this whole factory is frozen, which makes the level a lot easier because now I can just dash under these enemies. But, there's also a power-up that you can only get by freezing the lava pool. Now right here, if you make a very precise jump at those blocks, you can actually get yourself up into that little alcove. Let's see if I can do it. There we go. Has to be almost pixel perfect. And you've got another capsule here. This contains the arm parts, which allow you to basically charge your X Buster up to a level 4 shot. And um, also allows you to charge your special weapons, which can have some interesting effects. Just to show you guys. That's your maximum charge shot. Now, in order to charge a special weapon, you have to wait for it to turn purple like that. Otherwise, it'll just release a regular shot. That's the charge storm tornado. Charge shotgun ice is kind of fun. Now, see, I let it go too early. Onward! Oh. Anyway. That power-up I was talking about, right down here, another heart tank that if you didn't defeat Chill Penguin first, you normally couldn't get to that. Storm Tornado just rips through these miners like tissue paper. Ow. Oh, you think it's funny, eh? Haha! -ha! Oh, you're back already. Okay, I need to stop sucking. That was a fun noise. Anyway, dash jump from that platform, and there is another sub tank. Number two. And then you have to go back the way you came. Those guys kind of remind me of the uh, miners from Gutsman stage in Mega Man 1. Alright, now be careful of these compressors, because they will kill you if they get you. Now this part, just watch out for that crap that's leaking from the ceiling. Why did I just run into that? Ah, what is wrong with me today? I'll get it together eventually. Or not. Screw you, I'll just jump over you. Alright, anywho. Mammoth's weakness is the storm tornado. Mammoth really just tries to throw his weight around at you. He has a few projectiles. Um, he has his flame projectile attack, and he uh, will try to shoot oil slicks, which he can set on fire. Or he can stand there and reverse the conveyor belt. Now, no! if uh, you're standing on the ground, See, there's one of the oil slicks if he sets it on fire. If you're standing on the ground when he jumps, it will knock Mega Man on his ass for a second. You won't be able to move. Like that. Oh, one more charge shot. Whoosh! 
Ha! We hit each other simultaneously. Tee hee hee. Alright, now you get the fire wave weapon. Or flame wave? Fire wave? Uh, I forget. Fire wave. And it's got a really short range, but it's it's like the storm tornado. It just it can continuous stream of damage if you can hold it on an enemy. But it uses weapon energy pretty quickly too. Okay, now that we have the fire wave, I'm gonna do a little side trip to Chill Penguin real quick. Whoosh. Fire Wave is very powerful, but goes through weapon energy really fast if you're not careful. And it can also be a little inaccurate, like right there. Now the reason I'm coming back here is to show you where that heart tank was that I couldn't get before. I may do a jump cut here in a second just to uh, get to the part where the heart tank is because you've already seen me do this stage once. No need to uh, repeat myself. Dash. There we go. Okay. Here we are. Just getting this ride armor. Stand on this little platform here and jump out of your ride armor by hitting up and the jump button. And burn down that igloo fire wave, and there is our heart tank. While I'm at it, I might as well show you what the charged fire wave looks like. Sends pillars of flame across the screen. Which seem to go on forever. <laughs> Until they reach the end of the surface, anyway. Now show you the escape utility. This is for after you beat a stage, if you backtrack to that stage and you need to collect a power up or something but you don't want to actually complete the stage, hit the escape utility on your start menu there and it will take you back to the stage select screen but you'll also keep all the items and power ups that you got in that stage. So that's a neat little uh, trick you can do there. Not really a trick, but a uh, utility. Alright, now there are a few different bosses you could go after next. I'm going to go after Spark Mandrill, because he's probably the easiest. Now, Spark Mandrill is another one of those stages where the environment can change. Um, as you can probably tell here by the remains of a ship on the ground. That would be Storm Eagle's aircraft, apparently crashed into the power plant. Normally during this part there are um, sparks running through the floor on these little power lines, but since we beat Storm Eagle, those are no longer here. Instead, the power is pretty much out and the lights flicker on and off in this place, which is more of a cosmetic change than anything. Now, down here, there's a sub tank, but there is nothing we can do to reach it right now. There's really nothing you can do down here at all at this point. So it was kind of pointless for me to go down there. I just kind of wanted to show you guys where that sub tank was. Just to reference it for later. You'll need uh, the boomerang cutter from uh, Boomer Kuwanger. Now these guys will zip across the screen, light it up for a moment, and disappear. They appear on set spots. There's one right here. There's another one there. And then right here on this next ledge, be ready to shoot as soon as you jump. Because that guy can knock you into that hole and kill you. And that one's not supposed to be there. I don't know where he came from. At least I've never encountered him anyway. That's the first time I've ever seen him. Now this mini-boss, this is another enemy that becomes immensely easier once you beat Storm Eagle because since there's no power here, 
Uh, this guy really can't, well, he can crush you, but normally he draws power from the ceiling and then will, you know, shoot you with lightning or an electric blast, but now he tries to suck power out of the ceiling and nothing. And the storm tornado can take him out pretty quickly. These enemies, nothing really fancy. If you do too much damage to them, they do a little uh, dance there. And they'll continue to do that until you blow them up. These cannons will alternate between shooting diagonally and shooting horizontally. The charge shot takes them out pretty quickly. We're going to be coming up on a, another heart tank here in a moment. This one can be a little tricky to get. You can also get the heart tank with the... Uh, you can also get this heart tank with the boomerang cutter weapon, but it's also possible to get it legitly by jumping, like that. Which, like I said, can be a little tricky, but, you know, not impossible by any means. Down here, I like to use Storm Tornado to just clear these guys out quickly. I like totals. Okay. Here's another part with those little moonbeam guys. Those little moon bugs, I guess you could call them. Ow. Forgot about that one. Ah. Wait. Haha! -ha! Shotgun Ice, you're actually useful! No, actually, Shotgun Ice is going to be very useful in this fight. Because if you do this right, Spark Mandrel can't even touch you. Looks like an overgrown light bright piece. And now he dies. Oh no! And dead. Is that easy enough? I think so. Yeah, shotgun ice makes Spark Mandrel the complete joke, so. I kind of ruined the challenge there by using that. Later, when I fight Spark Mandrel for real, in the uh, Sigma stages, I'll try to uh, fight him legitimately without using the shotgun ice. But anyway, you get the electric spark here. It's, yeah, it's an okay weapon. Useful on a handful of enemies. Alright, I think that'll be all for today's video. Um, next time, I'll take down Armored Armadillo.